Now that we have covered big O notation, we're ready to look at big, big omega notation. As this is all also a property of functions, which is quite similar to big O notation as we will see and compare, the definition begins by letting f and g be functions from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. Then we say that our function f of x is big omega of g of x if there are constants c and k such that the absolute value of f of x is greater than or equal to c times the absolute value of g of x when x is greater than k. So already we see that this definition is very similar to our definition for big O notation. The only difference is this inequality. We are looking instead at our function f of x being greater than or equal to a constant multiple of the function g of x instead of our absolute value of our function f of x being less than or equal to a constant multiple of the function g of x. So what does that mean? So in big o, big o notation, when the inequality is less than or equal to, we are given an upper bound on the growth of our function f of x. So the growth of our function f of x is bounded above by a constant multiple of our function g of x. Alternatively, in this case, when, we're, when we find these constants c and k, where f of x is actually bigger than or equal to c times the absolute value of g of x when x is greater than k, we find a lower bound on the growth of our function f of x. So we know that our function f of x is at least as big or grows at least as fast as another, another function, a function g of x, with respect to this constant multiple. So as we can see, there is a strong relationship between a function being big omega and a function being big O. So in fact, we know that f of x is big omega of a function g of x if and only if the reverse happens, so g of x is big O of f of x. So how, how do we explain this? So f of x being big omega g of x means we have constant c and k and this inequality holding. In order for g of x to be big O of f of x, we would need to find other constants so that g of x is bounded above by some constant multiple of f of x. So what is that constant multiple? We know f of x bounds this constant multiple, c times g of x, above. So what we need to do is just get rid of this constant. So dividing both sides by c gives us that the constant 1 over c multiplied by f of x is an upper bound for the function g of x. And that explains why g of x is big O of f of x when f of x is big omega of g of x. I hope this makes sense, but if it doesn't, do see the text or ask questions on Moodle. Okay, and hopefully you're also able to now prove or show that various functions are big omega of another function in the same way that we show functions are big O. Okay, so now that we have a notion of big O notation and big omega notation, we are ready to look at the definition of big theta notation, which is a combination of big O and big omega notations. So again, this is a property of functions. So we let f and g be functions from the set of integers or the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. Then the function f of x is big theta of g of x if f of x is both big O of g of x and f of x is big omega of g of x. So what does that, that this mean in terms of applying these definitions of big O and big omega? omega? Well, it means that f of x is big theta of g of x if and only if there exist constants c1, c2, and k such that the following inequality holds. c1 of g of x is less than f of x is less than c2 of g of x for every x greater than k. So this means that f of x is both bounded below and above by a constant multiple of the function g of x. So that's how you would interpret big theta notation. Recognize that this constant c of 2 and this inequality comes from f of x being big O of g of x. Notice that we may have a different constant k1 to recognize this inequality. Similarly, this inequality with constant c1 and perhaps a different constant k1 comes from 
f of x being big omega of g of x, right? It bounds this constant multiple of g of x from above, or this constant multiple of g of x bound f of x from below. Now, I mentioned that we would have two different constants, k1 and k2, to recognize these different inequalities, translating these two definitions, but notice that we just have one within the definition of big omega, and that is because, I'm sorry, in big theta, and that is because we can just take the maximum of those values k1 and k2 and beyond the max of those two values, both inequalities will hold. Again, I hope this makes sense, but you can certainly refer to the textbook or post questions on Moodle for clarification. Okay, so now realizing that f of x is both bounded above and below by constant multiples of our function g of x, this tells us basically that these two functions grow at about the same rate. And so if f is big theta of g of x, then we essentially say that f of x and g of x are of the same order because essentially they grow at the same speed. Okay, so now that we have reviewed both big omega, big big O, big omega, and big theta notation and found the relationships between each of them, hopefully you're able to solve problems using each of these notations and we'll be ready to figure out how to apply these properties of functions when we look at the efficiency of algorithms. So before we complete, let's look at a specific example of a well-known function, the polynomial functions. So let's let f of x be a polynomial of degree n. So that means f of x is of this form, a n x to the n plus a n minus 1, a n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 1 plus all the way down to a 1 times x plus a 0, where all of these dots show all other powers of x between n minus 1 and 1. Notice that a0, a1, a n are all real numbers, and since we want to consider f of x as a polynomial of degree n, that means that a n cannot be 0. In the case of the polynomials of degree n, we can show that f of x is actually of order x to the n, or any polynomial of degree n is big theta of x to the n. So we'll leave the proof as an exercise, um, but perhaps these general forms and this general notation is a bit more confused is a bit too confusing for you so let's look at some specific examples so let's consider the following polynomial f of x equal to 8 x to the power of 5 plus 5 x squared plus 10 since this is a polynomial of degree 5 we know by this theorem that it is of order x to the 5 or is big theta of x to the power of 5 i'll leave it to you to think about how you can show applying the definitions of big O and big omega that this function here has the same order as x to the power of 5. Similarly, it doesn't matter what order the polynomial has, even if it has, sorry, what degree the polynomial has, even if it is of degree 199, we know that it is of order x to the power of 199. Okay, so this concludes the content for section 3.2. Please ensure that you post all of your questions that you have on Moodle, and we'll work together to solve some problems, and you'll have a chance to do some problems yourself and ask questions.